Good afternoon. And today, we have an important proclamation. Whereas the institution of slavery for African people in America began in 1619 with the landing of the first slaves on our shores and continued some 246 years until President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation on January 1st, 1863, to be effective January 1, 1865. And whereas the proclamation declared all enslaved people in the Confederate States in rebellion against the Union shall be then henceforward and forever free. And whereas the Civil War did not officially end until April 19, 1865, when General Robert E. Lee surrendered to General Ulysses S. Grant of Appomattox. Official notice to Texas came on June 19th of 1865. Whereas Juneteenth became a day of jubilation and liberation for Texas slaves, and today is the oldest known celebration of the ending of slavery in our nation. Juneteenth commemorates African American freedom and emphasizes education and achievement. It is a day, a week, and a month marked with celebrations, presentations, cook-offs, community discussions, and family gatherings. And whereas San Marcos supports and recognizes the importance of honoring and celebrating the rich heritage, resilience, and contributions of African Americans in our country and in our city. We also seek to foster an understanding, respect, and celebrate our diverse cultural backgrounds. And whereas the Honorable Al Edwards, a member of the Texas House of Representatives from Houston, authored and introduced HB House Bill 1016 in June 1978, and on June 13, 1979, Governor William P. Clement signed a bill into law that made Juneteenth Emancipation Day an official state holiday in Texas. And whereas Juneteenth did not mark the end of America's work to deliver on the promise of equality, it was a major milestone in recognizing the end of a dark chapter in American history and optimistically marked a new beginning. Juneteenth not only commemorates the past, it still calls us to action today. And whereas Juneteenth holds significant historical and cultural importance, it also provides an opportunity to reflect upon our nation's journey towards freedom, equality, and justice for all. It continues to serve as a reminder of the work still needed to actualize the words of our Declaration of Independence that all men are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, among them life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Whereas in June 2021, Juneteenth became the newest national holiday. One of the major points of Juneteenth is to remind us that all Americans were not free on July 4th of 1776. Juneteenth represents the struggle for freedom that is older than America itself and reminds us that freedom should be celebrated whether it came on July 4th of 1776 or June 19th of 1865. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the city of San Marcos does hereby proclaim June 2023 as the city of San Marcos month-long celebration of Juneteenth. And we do hereby call upon the people of San Marcos to join together throughout the month of June in honor of this significant day and to recognize the importance of Juneteenth. I want to thank each of you for what you do to make sure that we celebrate Juneteenth every year, then we don't forget. And y'all do a wonderful job with all the activities, a lot of publicity. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone want to speak? <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Actually, I, um, uh, Mayor Jane Houston, thank you very much. Um, our city manager, uh, Stephanie Rez, thank you. And also our going to our councilmen, uh, Matt Mendoza, thank you too, and all of you uh, also. Um, of course, you know, uh, this being a special holiday, uh, it's a good day every day, and to do Juneteenth for the whole month of Juneteenth until July the 4th, I should say, is great. But there are two mentors here um, that I've learned from and, and some of the other mentors here, but these two ladies, um, um, Mrs. Um, Ms. Cheatham and Ms. Franks have been mentors to me, uh, plus my family and a lot of other families in, within the city and the county. 
And I want to thank them because I would not be doing what I'm doing now if I didn't follow some of that leadership that they have uh, given to us. Uh, Mrs. Brooks, uh, same thing. And we have others that are here within this city too. Um, Mrs. Lilybell Townsend is not here. And there's some others that are, that are mentors within the city and the county of, um, of San Marcos um, that, should, that were going to be here. But we had a proclamation at the county too, which turned out to be really excellent. Uh, some of my committees here, uh, my sister Lillian Peterson Jimenez and uh, on the committee of Juneteenth and also our, uh, one of our reverends, um, Derek Benz, uh, is also, and then my other sister, Lily, um, Mary Jean. Five <laughs> sisters, sometimes I forget. Sometimes it's good to forget. <laughs> but this is really special, and I want to thank the city. Every year um, this is done by the mayor, and... Um, uh, she's done a wonderful job, and we want everybody to come to our Juneteenth um, celebration. We've got a lot of things that are going to be going on. Um, the Unity Walk, the Barbecue Cook-Off, Dunbar Heritage Association. I don't think anybody's here for them today, but they've done a wonderful job also, and uh, they're going to have, be having some activities also that are going on. I'm going to turn it over to Derek um, Benz. Um, he has kind of the program for what's going to be going on throughout the month. Thank you, sir. Mayor, we always appreciate the time to, to come together and appreciate the work that you've done in that regard. Recognizing history's right in front of us. These three represent a, a huge part of our, our community. We still look to them for guidance and correction when, when necessary. There are a couple of things. Uh, there's a question that was asked by a colleague uh, last week about Juneteenth. And the question was, is it really still necessary to have a whole nother day set aside to, to talk about freedom? And the answer is absolutely yes. Why? Because all Americans were not free, July 4, 1776. And I know that, that, that creates some discomfort with people, but the truth of it is, with June 19th, it doesn't matter when freedom came, it's here. Um, and so we celebrate that, and our hope is that whether you celebrated it June 4th before or June 19th now, that we can have 15 days from June 19th all the way to, to July 4th of celebrating freedom for all of San Marcos. That's actually a beautiful concept. Here is the schedule that we have. Uh, actually starts off on Thursday, June 15th. There's a cake auction sponsored by Ms. Rose Brooks, and um, that's a uh, scholarship that's done. It's gonna be over at Espinosa Hall at, at 6 p.m. on Thursday. On Friday, registration for the cook-off. Uh, that will be over at the Mitchell Center. Happy to report that that's where this year's activities will be for the foundation. And then Saturday comes. Saturday, there's a unity walk that start. We'll line up at 8.30 at the crosswalk, and then we'll follow a path around to the Mitchell Center. We'll have prayer, conversation, some discussion there. Uh, and then the official kickoff of the barbecue contest is at noon. There'll be a lot of folks who will be there cooking. I like to think that Hayes County has the best cooks, but we'll find that out after the event. Uh, the, the Calaboose has a kids art contest at noon as well. Dunbar Heritage uh, will be meeting at 2 o'clock to 7 o'clock over at the Dunbar Recreation Center. That's a lot on Saturday. Sunday morning, come on over to Greater Bethel uh, for Juneteenth uh, services there. And then on Monday morning, June 19th, there's a 5K run sponsored by the Dunbar Heritage Association. We'll make sure that these dates are available to you. Again, grab a friend, buy one, get one free, whatever it takes to get you out there. Um, everyone's invited. Whatever you can do, you're more than welcome to participate.
All right, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Jim Matano. I'm an I'm a assistant chief with the fire department. I'm standing in for Chief Stevens today, who's at a, uh, he's at a class up in Grapevine, so he asked me to stand in and, and do this for Josh, and uh, I was glad to do that. So I'm gonna put my glasses back on so I can read. <laughs> uh, firefighter Joshua Anchors was hired on July 26, 2021 and successfully completed his one-year probationary period. He will be pinned today by his wife, Allison, and the oath will be administered by Mayor Jane Hewson. First the oath, and then the pin. All right, if you would please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Joshua Anchors. I, Joshua Anchors. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully execute that I will faithfully execute the duties of firefighter, firefighter paramedic. The duties of firefighter paramedic for the city of San Marcos. For the city of San Marcos. Hayes County. Hayes County. Of the state of Texas. Of the state of Texas. And will to the best of my ability. And will to the best of my ability. Preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution and laws. The Constitution and laws of the United States. Of the United States. And of this state. And of this state. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Welcome. We're glad you're here. 
Let the pinning begin. If you want, you're good. All right. In that case, let the picture taking begin. Whatever arrangements, whatever you know, arrangements y'all need, the two of you. However, y'all want to do that.
Bay and reports of illness afflicting people who swim there. What we did find was at the outlets of storm drains, no matter where they were up and down the bay, if there was a flow of runoff into the surf zone, those people that were swimming in those areas uh, definitely experienced higher incidences of illnesses. The pollutants in the water affect surfers because we're actually the indicator species with all the pollutants. Um, when we are in the waters, we're ingesting it through our skin and our mouth. Even if people don't take a swallow of water, it's still getting into our systems, our ears, any orifice in your body. And it causes infections, it can cause uh, colds, sore throats at the very least. I wouldn't want to swim in you know, water that's got those diseases in there, you know, just floating around, making more diseases. I've seen it pretty much as bad as it can be. I've seen crap floating out in the water, literally. Generically, we call it fecal coliform. More specifically, you might know of it as E. coli, salmonella, or enterococcus. Whatever's in poop. There's times when it tastes funky, for sure.